I still remember the first time I heard about case interviews. I felt excited, then I quickly got lost on where to start. I heard people speak about some useless concepts that I had no idea what they were, how they were related, or where they fit into the big picture. Well, later I realized that those concepts were not that mysterious at all. It's just that nobody had quite done a good job of teaching me in a structured and top-down way how to learn them. In this video, I'll try to be that first somebody to rescue you and others that are in that same position that I found myself with all these rough starts. Welcome to our Case Interview 101 video, the very first case interview lesson every newbie should watch. Hi, my name is Kim Chen. I'm a former McKinsey consultant and the founder of the platform Management Consulting Prep. The insights I'm about to share with you are the results of years of experience in both management consulting and in case interview coaching. I've coached hundreds of candidates of various backgrounds, from the brightest students of Harvard, Wharton, to some real newbies. And no matter what, many don't have a good grasp of the basics of case interviews. In this video, I'll show you case interviews through the eyes of an absolute beginner. We will meet and explain many concepts along the way. This will ensure that you can learn these concepts in an intuitive way and still see the big pictures and how those concepts relate to each other. So what is a case interview? In the broadest sense, a case interview is like a normal job interview, but with business content involved. By doing this, companies can have a better idea of how well a candidate thinks, analyzes, and works through business problems. So what does the format look like? Each company uses a slightly different format of case interviews, but for the scope of this video, we will focus on the most common format that the big three, McKinsey, Bain, and BCG, all use. That is, the one-on-one -on -one format with no case data revealed before the actual interview. To better illustrate the concept we just discussed, here's a typical example of a business problem in a typical case interview at McKinsey, Bain, and BCG. Let's say we have a restaurant called In-N-Out Burger with recently falling profits. How can you help? The case interview will be a working session between the interviewer and the candidate to solve that business problem. During this process, the candidate's skill sets will be exposed and evaluated. What is evaluated in case interviews? In case interviews, the final result is not as important as the process. In other words, the interviewer will see whether you work through the business problem in the right way, regardless of whether or not you solved it correctly. This is because consulting firms believe that if a candidate has a good methodology, he or she can consistently solve many other business problems, not just one. Whereas if a candidate just luckily solves a case using a rusty approach, he or she may not be able to solve future cases. So what is a right way to solve cases? Well, there are several components to this. Number one, a good method will look for the root cause or reason behind the problem, not just the surface or the symptom of the problem. For example, if a patient is having pain in his chest, a non-root cause approach will be to provide some painkiller medications, whereas a root cause method would be to run tests and see what is really causing the chest pain and cure that root cause. Could it be a bone issue or a lung problem or even a heart disorder? So simply put, look for the root cause. Now that we know how to find the root cause, the next thing is to make sure that we can identify all root causes. That leads us to number two. A good method will break down the big problem into smaller pieces in a MISI way. The concept of MISI. MISI stands for Mutually Exclusive and Collectively Exhaustive, which in simple language really means two things. First, the small pieces of those big ones cannot overlap with each other. This is mutually exclusive. For example, a non misi way to break down the student body of a course is a group of international students and a group of female students. These two groups do overlap. Some international students can be female. Second, those small pieces all added together has to equal the big problem. For example, a non misi way to break down the student body of a course is a group of students from China and a group of students from the United States. These two groups combined do not necessarily equal the total student body. In this example, some misi ways to break that student body down are male and female or international students and domestic students. 
Now back to the original story. We were discussing the second component of a good method in case interviews, which is to break down any big problem into smaller pieces in a messy way. What would that look like in the in and out example then? So here's a bad method. Could declining profitability maybe be due to weak management, increase in competition, increase in beef costs, or shift of consumer tastes? While all of the above can very well be the root cause reason, that's not a messy way to break down the big profitability problem. There's some overlappings and no guarantee that all possible root causes are listed. Here's a good method. Declining profitability is either caused by A, decreasing sales revenue, or B, increasing cost. Then, within each branch, we can further break down. Now, you may wonder, how do we consistently do this? What is a good way for always breaking down big problems in the proper form? This leads us to our next concept, case interview frameworks. The concept of case interview frameworks. In simple language, a framework is like a preset template that candidates can use to break down frequently seen business problems or cases. By using frameworks, you can be certain that your approach is always structured and messy. Some of the most popular frameworks are a profitability framework used for profitability cases, McKinsey M&A framework used for merger and acquisitions cases, Porter's Five Forces used for market entry cases, and others like 4C, 4P, etc., frameworks that are used for other general cases. You'll find more detailed information on case interview frameworks in other videos and on our website, www.mconsultingprep.com. Okay, let's come back to the big picture. Now that we can break down the problem in messy ways, we have to find the root cause, fast. The number three component of a good method is to appropriately prioritize which small piece to go deeper into. This leads us to the next concept, hypothesis. The concept of hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess of where the root cause might be and therefore going into branches that are more likely to contain the root cause. Hypotheses should be based on information provided in the case. See other videos and visit our website for more detailed information. So to summarize, a good method to approach and tackle business problem has three components. Number one, look for the root cause reason and solve it, not just the symptoms. Number two, look for the root cause by breaking down the big problem into smaller pieces in a messy way. Number three, Use hypothesis to prioritize pieces that most likely contain the root cause. What is the common flow of case interviews? The flow of a case interview differs between interviewers and firms. To easily visualize this, let's imagine a spectrum where the two ends represent two types of case interviews. On one end, the interviewer rarely intervenes. The candidate will lead the approach, from structuring the problem, drawing frameworks, asking for data, and solving the case. This is referred to as the candidate drive case. On the other end, the interviewer significantly controls the process. He or she may help out in structuring the case and has the candidate work on specific parts of the overall problem. This is referred to as the interviewer drive case. Most case interviews fall in the middle of the spectrum, so distinguishing the two types of case interviews only matters in the preparation process. What does it take to do well in case interviews? Based on my experience, this is probably one area that most students don't realize, leading to an unbalanced and insufficient preparation for interview days. So to answer the question, there are three equally important factors that decide whether you get the offer or not. Number one, how good are you with consulting math, numbers, and quantitative ability? Number two is what I refer to as case interview tips and techniques. This includes a wide variety of habits from showing your structured mindset saying the right things, asking for a timeout at the right times, getting clarifications, to even organizing your notes. Certainly, these are skills and habits that are learnable if one has the right materials and a good study plan. Number three is your business intuition. How can you be insightful and creative in various business contexts? A candidate insufficiently prepared for this is very much like a basketball player without physical strength and athleticism. No matter how skillful he is, he can't compete well. Of the three factors, this is probably the hardest, and it may take the longest time to prepare for. So now what? If this is actually your very first case interview lesson, you may be wondering what are some of the next steps I should take for my study. Step 1. See or read some sample case interviews in action to connect what you learn in this video with the real illustration. 
You may find this in our later videos on consulting firms' websites or in various other prep materials. No need to do a mock case interview at this point. It can be very frustrating and discouraging if you haven't got the basics yet. Step two, develop the habit of reading business publications to improve your business intuition. The earlier you start doing this, the better. There are many good sources of business publications, but I strongly recommend those from McKinsey, Bain, and BCG. Find the links below. Step three, get started with your math practice again. Again, the sooner the better. Watch our consulting math video or visit our website for more information. Step four, learn those tips and techniques. See our other videos or visit our website for the right materials and study plan. Step five, only at this point you should do a mock case interview. Do it, reflect, study the area you don't feel comfortable with, go back and do a few more mock cases and keep the cycle going on. I hope this has been a good first lesson on your case interview preparation journey. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. This will allow us to develop content that better suits your needs and concerns. Thank you for watching and don't forget to share this with your clubs and friends if you think this video is helpful for them as well. At Management Consulting Prep, we believe everybody can make it to consulting. Are you a believer?